In this video, we'll take a little deeper look at the Omega PS62 multi-format matrix presentation switch. We'll set this on the tech bench, I'll connect up a display and a few devices, then I'll log into the web GUI interface through the network, and we'll take a look at some of the intricate settings inside the web GUI interface of the Omega PS62. I have the PS62 on the tech bench now. Let's go ahead and make a few simple connections. First, my display. I'm going to use the HDMI output port. That's output number two on the back of the PS62. Plug the HDMI cable into there. Next, my laptop, which will be our source. We're going to plug uh, my laptop into HDMI number one. That's port number three on the back of the PS62. Now, I've also got here and at Lona HTVS camera in black finish. This is a USB camera, so let's connect this up to the PS62 as well so we can use a camera for video in our application. This will connect with a standard USB-A cable and we'll plug that into the first open port on the USB hub on the back of the 62. Now my laptop also needs to have USB connection to the PS62 and my laptop is called the USB host. So I'm going to use my USB cable from my laptop and the other end of this is connected to, to the uh, USB-A port on my laptop. We'll connect this USB-B port to a USB host port number one on the back of the PS62. And if we wanted to here, uh, we can make a few additional connections. Notice on the far left here you've got two HD base T inputs. So if I had an HD base T tra Omega transmitter coming from uh, a speaking location like a, um, a lectern or a conference room table, I could connect those in right here. There's some additional HDMI ports plus a USB-C port. Also, I have an input for a microphone if we wanted to connect that. And notice you've also got audio input uh, number one and number two, so I could have two different devices or two different zones of audio input into this. And on the output side, not only do we have two video outputs, the HD base T and the HDMI, you have associated with that two audio outputs so that you can have uh, two different zones of audio tied to this as well. This would be a great uh, product to use for a, a divisible room application. And for the PS62, just plug the power cable straight into the back of it and that'll begin the power cycle. Now that we have the PS62 up and running and all of our connections are made, I've now turned to my laptop, I've connected it. You can see my laptop is now displayed on my display here on the wall behind me. And the USB camera that we connected is up here in the upper corner. You can see my camera uh, working just fine. So uh, through the USB hub of the PS62, I now have that feed back to my laptop and I can control my camera from there as well. Now let's flip around to the front panel of the PS62 and let me show you a real simple way to control or switch inputs on the PS62. Now we're looking at the front panel of the PS62. Notice I've got some toggle buttons here on the right side. A button for menu, enter, up and down, and six numbered toggle buttons. And on my display right now, it's reading output number one is set to input number two, and output number two is set to input number three. To make change, changes to that is very easy. If I press button number one, this will light up output number one. Now I set which input should go to output number one. Let's say input number four. Then I press enter. Now on my display, you can see input four has been routed to output number one. Now we have one more connection left to make for the PS62, and that is the connection for the LAN port. Let's get this product up on the network. I'm gonna take my ethernet cord, plug that into the black RJ45 that says LAN. And you'll see the lights begin to start flashing here and we will uh, be connected to the network and my switch will begin assigning an IP address to this unit. Uh, now let's go to the desktop and log into the web GUI interface of the PS62 and take a look at the menu settings through the web GUI interface. The Omega PS62 includes a built-in web GUI which allows easy remote management and control of all features. To connect to the web GUI, make sure that an ethernet cable is connected between the LAN port of the Omega PS62 and the network. 
Use an IP scanner to determine the IP address of the unit. Launch a web browser and enter the IP address in the address bar. The PS62 login page will be displayed. I have that here. Enter the following login to connect. The username is admin and the password is at Lona with a capital A. Click the submit button. Here on the info page, you will find some basic information about your system. First, the model of the unit you're connected to, as well as the software version, the date and time, and the status of any connected transmitters or receivers. You'll also find information about what's connected to your two outputs on the PS62. Output 1, as well as Output 2. Select I.O. settings from the top navigation menu bar to adjust routing and video settings. Matrix mode. When enabled, the outputs will switch independently. When disabled, that's the default, the outputs will mirror each other. Auto switch. When enabled, the input will switch to the most recently plugged in. This is only available when matrix mode is disabled. Input selection. To manually route ports, only one port will be switchable when matrix mode is disabled. When matrix mode is enabled, it will have the option to switch both ports independently or use the all output selection to select the same source for both outputs. Test pattern. Disabled by default, when enabled, output one will display one of three test pattern options, color bar, crosshatch, or slash. HDMI scalar output. The when enabled will display extra options. When disabled, you will not see the additional options. This is for the HDMI output only. Resolution. Select the output resolution the signal source will be scaled to from the drop down menu. Aspect ratio. Select between keep which will keep the aspect ratio of the source device and fill, which will adjust the picture to fill the display. Overscan. Enable to be able to manually adjust the horizontal and vertical size of the source image. The default is zero and can be adjusted from zero to 50%. Adjust the output's brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and hue, and manually uh, manually, and the default for these is zero and can be adjusted from zero all the way up to 60%. Reset to default. Press the reset button to set all scaling options back to factory default. HDCP settings. HDCP on. This mode is selected by default. The PS62 will report HDCP compliant to the selected sources. If the outputs are not HDCP compliant, they will receive no signal from the source. HDCP off. When selected, the PS62 will report non-HDCP to the source, so it will only send non-compliant source signals. This is especially good for presentations that are using sources that automatically report all signals as HDCP compliant, even when no HDCP is necessary. For example, Apple computers with spreadsheets and other non-compliant presentation material. Select audio from the top navigation to adjust output levels and mic options. Source. Select between HDMI output and auxiliary 1, 2, or 3. Ducking. Enable ducking to have the source audio adjust when receiving active mic input. Attack time. Set the delay before ducking begins after detecting signal from the microphone. Release time. Sets the delay time after no signal is detected that ducking stops. Program decrease. Set the amount to ensure the program level is low enough when ducking is triggered that the speaker or audio can be heard. Trigger level. Set the level of sound from the mic that will trigger ducking. Down mix. Sets auxiliary source to mix output mono, enabled, or two channel, disabled. Mixer. Mix analog audio sources in with program audio. This is the same settings for output two configuration as well. Master volume, output one and two. Adjust the output volume for the HDMI and HDBase-T outputs. Default is zero dB 
and can be adjusted from negative 90 dB to 10 dB. Input volume. Level adjustment adjusts the input volume for each individual audio source, default to 0 dB, and can be adjusted from negative 90 to 10 dB. This is also true for the settings in EQ output 1 and 2. Select display from the top navigation menu to adjust display and control settings. CEC command for HD base T and HDMI. Power. When using CEC protocol, the PS62 will send the on and off commands out the HDMI outputs of the PS62 and compatible HD base T receivers. Volume. When pressing these buttons, we'll send the CEC command for volume up, down, and mute out the HDMI outputs of the PS62 and compatible HD base T receiver. System settings. Display auto power. Enable this to send the programmed command to the display to turn on or off when detecting or losing AV signals. Auto power off timer sets the period of time between the loss of AV signal and when the display off command is sent. Default is 15 seconds and can be adjusted from 5 seconds to 1 hour. Lamp cool down timer and display warm up timer. Set the time between when the projector lamp has turned off or on to when it can receive new commands. Default is 10 seconds and can be adjusted from 10 seconds to 300 seconds. Control type. By default, CEC is selected for control of the display. IP and RS-232 can also be selected. When IP or RS-232 are selected, additional fields will become available. Select RS-232 from the top navigation menu to adjust the parameters of the RS-232 ports. Here you can set parameters for console, HD base T1, HD base T2, and HD base T output. They each have the same settings, baud rate, data bit, parity, and stop bit. The defaults are loaded. 115,200 for baud rate is the default, eight data bits, none for parity, and one stop bit are the defaults for each setting. Select EDID from the top navigation menu to save or load EDIDs. EDID settings. Use the drop-down menu to select from default, highest common resolution, between source and display, 12 internal EDIDs, and previously saved EDIDs. EDID saved. The ID field will display the memory number and currently saved EDID names. Select the output from the drop-down menu to be saved. Once the output is selected, press the Save button to make it available in the EDID settings drop-down menu. Select System from the top navigation to adjust Network, USB, and General System options. Under Network, you have the MAC address which will automatically be identified, the ability to toggle between DHCP and static mode, set your IP address in accordance with your network settings, your network mask, gateway, and if needed, Telnet port, Telnet login mode, and Telnet timeout value. The host name is used to set the name for the matrix. This will show up in the network discovery. Under USB host, follow USB sets the USB host to follow the most recently connected device. If a host is connected, then it will auto switch to that source. If the current host loses signal or stops broadcasting, it will fall back to the previously connected active device. Manual, select which host will be used. Select between local USB, HD base T, and USB C type inputs. Below that, the system panel can be used to lock the front panel so that no one can uh, depress the buttons on the front panel. You can also factory default the PS62 from here, as well as upload new firmware to the PS62. Now you know a little bit more about setting up the Omega PS62 Matrix Switch. To learn more about this product and all of the great products in the Omega family, check us out online at atlona.com.